Good morning, good people, uh, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Taos. Thank you for bearing with us through some fascinating technical difficulties this morning. Uh, I remember back at the very beginning of the times of COVID, it was Palm Sunday and we said we were gonna yell Hosanna or save us every time something went wrong technologically. Uh, we might have a few Hosannas this morning. We've already had a few. We're glad that you're with us um, and we hope that in this virtual space, you can find a welcome no matter who you are or where you're coming from, that you can feel at home and know that you are loved and you belong here. I'm going to put us on gallery view for just a moment. Um, I have a couple announcements, but to see if there are any announcements from the congregation. If you have an announcement, raise your hand or unmute yourself, please. All right, there's Margaret. Uh, but we don't have sound from Margaret. Um, uh, still can't hear you, Margaret. You. I was going yes. to say, it's, we have two birthdays to sing happy birthday to. Mine was last week and Sandra's is this week. Well, those are some pretty special birthdays. Are there other birthdays or anniversaries we should be singing about? All right. Maestro. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Margaret and Sandra. Happy birthday to all of y'all. We're glad you were born. Um, a, few, a few announcements this morning. Uh, the first is, it appears uh, that the person who is going to be liturgist is not signed on. Um, so Mark, I'm wondering, would you mind filling in? No, not at all. Just give me a Excellent. second here. Excellent. You got a second because... Uh, Okay. Uh, that's all right, Dan. We all need the music right now. Uh, you got a second because we have a couple announcements. Um, two things I want to let you guys know. Uh, the first is, as you've probably noticed, we are not yet worshiping in person. Um, the, num the COVID task force is hard at work. The numbers are going up uh, statewide and countywide. We are not within the acceptable threshold of the task force. So we will let you know with at least two weeks notice before any in-person, before any in-person worship happens. Um, and we know realistically that may be a while yet. However, uh, we will next week, October 18th at 2.30 PM, and you'll get an email about this. Uh, we will be having a drive-in prayer service. Uh, this will be an adventure. We've never done anything like this before, but many churches have. Um, and the, a huge thank you to Jasmine and the folks at the TCA for helping us figure this out. Uh, if you, and to the worship team and Gilda and Mark in particular. Uh, so you can drive your car in just like the drive-in movies um, and park and you'll be able to tune into your radio uh, to hear this will not be in place of normal worship. We'll have normal Sunday Zoom worship. And then anyone who wants to can drive in. It'll be spaced apart. Um, so we can at least see each other from a distance. Um, it will also be the, the kickoff of our fall stewardship campaign, which this year includes a significant capital campaign. Um, we are... Uh, as, as some of y'all have heard or know, uh, the building's been needing a new roof for a long time, and the time has come. Uh, in fact, we had a very significant leak in the back building with that freak snowstorm in September, uh, and so we are already underway on getting the 
roof fixed, the dam or the roof replaced, the damage fixed, um, and some troubling mold remediated. Uh, that's all really good news. The bad news is it's going to cost us a lot of money. But it doesn't have to be bad news. Um, we're launching a capital campaign and we will get you more information. We are hoping that uh, y'all and all who use our building are able to be generous enough that we can get these roofs replaced, um, not just on the back building, but our hope is to replace the roof of the front building before something happens uh, where we end up with water damage and mold. So, uh, we got to raise the money and we got to get to work fast. So though you'll have more information on that later. For now, I think that's it. Um, Mark, was that enough time to yes, get I'm things good. together? Yes. All I'm right, good. then let's start with the call to worship. Welcome everybody. This is the call to worship. Come all who hunger for good news. We thirst for words of hope and healing. Come from rural road and city street. We gather at the King's invitation. Come join the celebration. Let us worship the Lord. Our opening hymn is Rejoice, the Lord is King. It's in your purple hymnal 363 and the blue hymnal 155. Please join Dan and I. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks, sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Our Savior Jesus reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had words and stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules o'er earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are taught, Jesus give. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in glorious hope, for Christ the judge shall come, and gather all the saints to their eternal home. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. our call to confession trusting in god's everlasting mercy let us confess our sin together prayer of confession extravagant god you invite us to your table in the kingdom of heaven but we do not take our place in the east we say we have more important things to do and turn back to labors that threaten to consume us, beckon us again. We pray that we may respond with gratitude. In your mercy, gather us in that we might experience of your kingdom and taste the abundance of your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. 
poured out in the waters of baptism. Friends, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come and is here to stay. So know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Know that wherever you've been, whatever you've done, whatever grief or shame or fear you hold on to from the past, you can set that down and let it go. You've already been forgiven. And know that wherever you go on this journey of life, you go with God and you will be always forgiven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> illumination. Gracious God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Open our hearts and minds so that may we that we may hear what your spirit is saying to your church today. Amen. The first Testament reading from the Old Testament is Exodus 32, 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So that all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it into a mold and cast the image of a cast of a calf and they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you have brought up of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a cast, calf, and they have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stick necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and you shall make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them? It was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountain and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind and do not bring disaster your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own selves saying to them, I will multiply your descendants 
like the stars in heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster and he planned that he planned to bring on his people. The word of our God, thanks be to God. The epistle reading is Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Philippians 4. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and self stay firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Aodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always again, I will say. Rejoice, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surrounds all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, and whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of our God, thanks be to God. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When my head is bowed in sorrow, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me.
Thank you, Mark and Dan. Thank you. As always, we will post a video of the anthem on Facebook and YouTube for folks to listen to later if you would like. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 22, verses 1 through 10. Hear what God's spirit is saying to God's church. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet but they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to her business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are continuing this week with our saga of Moses and the Hebrew children in the wilderness. And today, as we heard Mark read, we've come to the story of the golden calf. This is one of those top 10 of the Hebrew Bible stories, one that makes it into every children's Bible and Sunday school curriculum. And usually when we tell this story, we strip it down to just the basics, the Israelites worship an idol, thereby breaking the Ten Commandments. That's bad. God and Moses get mad. The moral of the story, don't bow down to idols, whether it's the golden calf, the gold standard, or just plain gold. And certainly that is part of what happens here. But as the sermon title suggests, I think the story that Mark just read for us is a tale of two idols. One's just easier to spot than the other. The golden calf is the second idol in the story. It's the most obvious and egregious way that the people violate the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. After he builds this golden calf, Aaron literally tells the people, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. They hold a festival, build an altar, bow down and worship. But the golden calf is not where the idolatry problem starts. Back up with me in the story, if you will, for a moment or two. The text begins by telling us that the people are impatient because Moses has delayed in coming down the mountain. I don't know about you, but I get that. 40 days 
is a long time to wait in the wilderness for further instructions from your leader. Two weeks is a long time to wait for the results from a biopsy or lab. Four years is a long time to wait for the opportunity to cast your vote. Eight months or 18 months is a long time to wait to return to a beloved church building. We know a thing or two about waiting and we know how excruciating the waiting can be when there's no end in sight. Waiting, longing, hoping, these are universal human experiences and perhaps they help us cultivate a little compassion for the Israelites. They are not hard-hearted, wayward wanderers determined to forsake the God who loves them. They're scared and they're tired and they're weary for the waiting. If we're honest with ourselves, so are we. This band of weary, fearful refugees turns to Aaron and says, come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Did you catch that? It's not God that the people are concerned about, it's Moses. They say Moses is the one who brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Moses has been gone so long that they want other gods to worship. The people have come to associate the presence of Moses with the presence of God so deeply that they are conflating the two. Moses is the arrow that points them toward God, the bridge that connects them, but the people have begun to treat him and think of him as if Moses himself is the God upon whom they depend. Remember a few weeks ago when the Israelites were hungry, they said to Moses, you have brought us out of the desert to starve. And when they were thirsty, they asked, why are you going to let us die of thirst? Moses keeps telling them, God will provide. God will not let you starve. But his words fall on deaf ears. The people have let go of God and latched on to Moses. The children of Israel don't start by running away after foreign gods. They start by looking to their leader, their godsend, Moses, and missing the message for the messenger. After all, God can be so intangible, so obtuse and beyond our comprehension. It's easier to hold on to something or someone that we can actually hear and see and touch. We do this too, don't we? We confuse the gifts with the giver, the creation with the creator. We latch on to the things and the people that connect us to God. Like the Israelites clung to Moses, we look for arrows pointing us to God, and then we grab on tight to the sign itself. Maybe it's a relationship or a recovery program. The beauty of creation or a beloved family tradition. Maybe it's a hope or a dream, whether for the political future of our nation or simply how we wanted to spend Christmas this year. Maybe it's the Bible or the church itself. Wonderful things that point us and connect us to God, but are not the ultimate source 
of our hope. It's an easy mistake to make. I do it all the time. In the last week alone, the list of things other than God in which I've grounded my security includes my health, my financial security, beloved family and friends, the right to vote, my morning coffee, brilliant yellow aspens, my cat, my partner's dog, and the life and legacy of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I could go on. Friends, these are good things. All these things that we latch on to, they are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. But they are not God. They are not the ultimate reality upon which we finally cast our hope. God used Moses to bring the Hebrew children out of Egypt. And at the end of the story, it is Moses who brings the wandering idolatrous people back to God. It is Moses who intercedes for the people when God gets angry and wants to wipe out the Israelites and start over again. Moses is the bridge, the sign, the arrow pointing God back to the people and the people back to God. Friends, it is a hard time to be alive and a hard time to be the church. I saw an article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday called The Art of the Pandemic Meltdown with the tagline, under stress from every front, we're having more meltdowns. Here's how to lose it the right way. So that's where we're at right now. Not how to make it through and keep it together, but how to completely fall apart with the least amount of lasting damage. Now, more than ever, we need those things, those people that connect us to God. We need the bridges, the links, the arrows, we need something to hope for. And the story reminds us, we need to look to the source from whom all these blessings flow. So folks, look around. What is giving you hope right now? What is pointing you towards God? What is restoring your faith and humanity? What is getting you through the day? Let's go toward those signs, those bridges, those arrows. And as tempting as it is, let us not stop there and hold on to them but let's turn and walk where they point us. For it is there that we will meet our God. Amen. Our next hymn is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. In the purple hymnal, you can find it. Uh, number 353 in the blue hymnal, number 379. Or if you don't have a hymnal of any color, just Google it. The words will come up. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide the face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His both his covenant, his blood, so pour me in the hoping flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, all lust to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Friends, we do stand on and grounded in the unchanging love of Christ. So let us who have been blessed with Christ's peace share that peace with one another. I'm gonna put us on gallery view, invite folks to unmute themselves and share words of peace with one another. And folks joining us on Facebook or later on YouTube, peace be with you as well. Peace, peace be with peace you. Everyone. Peace to all of you. Peace, peace to all of you. Everyone. <laughs> peace of Christ be with everyone. Peace be peace with you. Christ be with all. Also with you. On Facebook, we've got a piece from Sandra and a few others. I don't know exactly who's there, but peace to each of you. Now, having shared Christ's peace and knowing that God is there for us, even when we can't feel God, let us turn to God in prayer. Folks on Facebook, I invite you because there's a delay to type in prayer requests. We will lift those up later in the prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving Christ, ever living spirit, you are the solid rock upon which we stand. You are the source in which we live and move and have our being. We give you thanks for the world you've created, the church to which you've given birth, the lives that you've given us to live, the ways that even in difficult times, you allow us to serve you and be your body together. God, we pray for all those affected by adverse weather or the effects of climate change, for those facing fires in California and the West, and for folks in Louisiana and the Gulf affected by Hurricane Delta. God, we pray for your church who is tired of being scattered and yet watching the numbers know that the time is still not yet. We pray for perseverance when we are impatient, for hope when we feel despair, for courage when we feel afraid and above all for love to continue to follow you in any and every circumstance. God, we pray for those who lead our nation and who lead all the different nations of the world. 
We pray for wisdom, for spiritual health and wholeness, for our country as we approach an election that is extremely divisive. God, we pray for, the, for love and for justice and the ability to be good to one another. God, we pray for all those who are sick or suffering, for those who are hungry and homeless, for immigrants and refugees, for those who suffer the effects of racism, white supremacy, patriarchy, misogyny, or any of the other sinful systems in which we live. God, we pray that you would use us as your body and blood, your hands and feet to make this world look more like your kingdom, to trust in you above all else, and to spread that word of peace and rejoicing as far as we may go. And now, oh God, we lift up in silence and aloud the particular joys and concerns on our hearts this morning. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray? From Facebook, Sandra says, prayers for safe travel as Randy and I travel to Costa Rica this Saturday. Prayers that we have all the necessary documentation to be allowed entry. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Cliff. Prayers of thanks, the Lord, for our son's safe arrival at his home with his family in Arlington, Texas, after an almost 12 hour drive yesterday. God in your mercy. Your Your prayers. Prayers. For whom and what else do we pray? Prayers to all my friends, family, my church friends, that we are all safe and hopefully none of us will get the coronavirus. God in your mercy. As always, we pray for the health and well being of those in this community, those known to us and those unknown, for Dulce Romero's health as she heads toward her final chapter, for Francis and Marnie and all others facing cancer, for all who are facing health issues known to us, O oh God, and known only to you. God, in your mercy. Here are we lift up all these prayers, words spoken and words unspoken, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Friends, indeed, God has poured out many blessings on all of us. And so each day and each week, we have the chance to give, to give back. I invite you to take a moment now to give 
either write a check to the church or give online. I'm about to send you all the link. As always, it's our homepage, firstpresbyteriantaos.com. Uh, and also to be thinking of a way that you can reach out and be involved, be a blessing in this community, in the lives of your loved ones and of strangers this week. And even without passing the plate, we do know that God is the source of all good things and the one from whom all blessings flow. So let us sing a doxology to the Lord our God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all people here be. Praise God from an this heavenly host. Praise triune God whom we adore. Amen. Our closing hymn is How Great Thou Art. Purple hymnal 625, blue hymnal 467. Please join us. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, when through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take my home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim 
my God, the great Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Friends, God has given us good gifts. And yet God has called us to remember that there is only one source, only one God, only one upon whom we can finally depend. So let us go forth this week looking for what gives us hope and strength and life. And when we find it and see it, let us turn and see what it is pointing us toward, the holy, living, loving God. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. And as we go, may joy and nothing less find us on the way. May we be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Go with us, Lord, and guide the way through this and every coming day that in your spirit, strong and true, our lives may be our gift to 